Welcome to Fantasy Grounds Unity teaser trailer. We will be showing you the tile functions that we have built in. So I've got a basic floor map here, and then I've got a grid set. Uh, and currently turned on, I'll turn it off later. But this will help you kind of line things out. Uh, we're fine tuning this a little bit on exactly how we want it to work. But you'll be able to grab your assets here, and then, uh, for instance, I can drag this in to this area and you'll see that it says 7.7 .7 by 7.7 .7. that's the default size if you look at the total it's 384 pixels wide by that many tall and it's a 50 by 50 grid so by default that's the size that it's going to set for this particular uh, image i don't really want that because i want it to be a nice even grid number so i'm going to set that to six and then what you'll see is when i click here uh, so now if i click on my grid it will actually place it uh, and fill up a six by six area. <clears throat> now, the other interesting part is that this, once I've uh, set that in, I can, you know, click and move it around if I want to. Um, I can position it, I can rotate it. I'll show you how to rotate it here in a, in a minute. And I can also drag in other images. And then any other image will automatically um, inherit the same scale as what I have set in my tile tool. So I can just drag and drop. Uh, and now I've got a new one and I didn't have to set it again. So I can kind of skip that step and then just bring in uh, new tiles and, and then adjust it. So the other thing you can do is uh, once it's placed, you can just use the cursor and you'll see how it shifts by a single grid each time I do that. You know, off slightly. So I'm going to use control to control arrow keys to move it over just a, just a smidge. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can rotate it. So if I want to go this way, I'm just holding down the, the arrow keys and uh, the shift and the arrow keys to move it around. Um, so you can really kind of do a lot with this pretty easily. I can do control C and control V and now I can, um, it's not going to work. Still need to evidently uh, plan out your dungeon space just a tad bit. So uh, very quickly kind of get up and running with a small dungeon. There we go. Um, and let's see, I need a close, close that part off and reposition it just a tad. So we're still working on some fine details of the snapping, uh, grid snapping, but here you've got a small little dungeon with some pre-done areas. These, uh, in addition, these specific tiles, we are going to code them so that they have the line of sight baked into them. So you'll be able to just plop them down on your map. It'll automatically scale the line of sight for you as well, and then you'll be off and running uh, in very short order. So uh, some of the other functions, let me show you with some walls that we've created. So here's like a, uh, a wall brush. I'll bring that over. I'm going to make it a two by two. And uh, you'll see when I click here, that um, it's going to, again, do the same sort of thing where it's going to inherit uh, the 2x2 two two grid now because I've now resized uh, to a different size. So allows you to very quickly get up and running. Uh, I can do, let's see, inside corner and pivot that around. And then I could do an outside corner as well. If I can find it, there it is outside corner and put that around and you see how it was a little bit off there you can hold down control you can you can fine-tune move it or you can move it in chunks uh, so that gives you really just a whole lot of different uh, settings you can do and if you want to do a very very large section again you can you can always just change your scale again so I could just switch to here and say okay I want a I don't know, say like a, I want to go back to the six by six scale. Uh, let's see, I think that would be way up here maybe. Yeah. So if you want to do something like that, then you can, you know, quickly fill areas uh, if you really want to. So um, yeah, lots of, lots of different options there. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show you, which is this, uh, let's see. I'm going to just drag a new one in because this is really one of my favorite features. So let's do a, a two by two, and I'm just gonna start a new area here. So let me zoom in a bit. So in addition to moving around, 
uh, I can hold down shift and hit the up arrow and you'll see that it just kind of grows by a single grid, uh, grid square. So I can do like that very easily. It's very easy to move around. The other thing I can do is uh, if you shrink down smaller, uh, you'll see it's, it just gets a little bit tinier. It's going to shrink by half each time. Uh, but you can do that you know, in a pinch to, uh, to maximize your usage of tiles. And that way our tiles don't get cluttered with the same tile facing the left, to the left, the right, up, down, sideways, whatever. We can just simply include a single instance of every one of the tiles, and then you can orient them any way you want. And if you don't want to orient them, uh, like let's say in 45 degree increments, uh, you can hold down Shift and Control, and then you can rotate it uh, in any direction you want, uh, and then just kind of hold it down. You'll see how it'll, it'll move around. The other thing you can do is you can hold uh, Control L, and now you can lock it. So that token now, if I try to click and drag it, it won't move. Whereas if I click and drag this one, uh, it's able to move that around. So once I have a token and I'm pretty happy with where it's going to be placed, just lock it and move on to the next token. You can also tab through, um, tab, and then shift tab goes backwards. So um, makes it very easy. That way you don't have to try to find which one it is, but you can also click here uh, if you wanted to locate them. So uh, hopefully you like that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to more videos and more examples of tiles that we'll be using and creating as we unlock more stretch goals. Thanks for watching.